Let's move to the next topic. And next topic is going to be Michael Porter Jr. We're going to talk mm. a little bit more about him. I talked a lot about Sean him already. Sean Gustafson. Uh, but yeah, yeah. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's something that I think so far after his career high of 25 points, we have to talk about the performance. We have to talk about what his true ceiling is because we talked about it a, a little bit because he has a mm. lot of good shooting uh, stats so far. We talked mm-hmm. about his last four games, 74% from the field, uh, 50% from three, averaging 16 a game. That is very, very good. But like you were saying, Ricky, when you're looking at the stat sheet, he didn't add anything else to the game. You know, I think his career high in assists in a game is two. Uh, he's not a great rebounder. His, his career high so far is eight. He's not that great defensively. So we have to talk about what his true ceiling is uh, in the NBA. Is he going to be a future star? Is he going to be a guy that's going to jump off the page night in, night out? Or is he going to be a bench scorer? I refer to him as being a part of the big three in Denver. I think it's going to be Jamal Murray, Nicole Jokic, and Michael Porter Jr. But I'm mm-hmm. interested in what you guys think. Obviously, well, I am clearly biased as I thought he was the second, uh, the first best player uh, mm-hmm. in, in, in the draft before the draft even started. Um, I think I changed my mind mid midway through because I was wrong. Uh, and then he also got hurt, too, so that, that took it out. But yeah. talent-wise, I think he was probably at least top three in that draft, yeah. uh, for well, sure. So I, uh, what are your guys' thoughts on his true ceiling in the NBA after watching, uh, you know, so far, you know, uh, 25 games from him? I mean, looking back, just before I give my thought, We're getting historical. we all had him going fourth in our mocks. We all had him as the fourth pick off the board for the very last one. So we're yeah. all thinking the I, same thing. I think that's where we would have taken him. Yeah. I just think that we were cons- – I, I don't think any of us were also sh- – I, I, I wasn't shocked that he fell because yeah. of the injury stuff. And the thing that I – my first thought when it was like Michael Porter started playing better this week was remember when we talked about Nuggets and like we had that big trade podcast and we mm-hmm. mentioned like what trades the Nuggets could do and I brought up – well. Well, do you include a Michael Porter Jr. in those trades? This officially for me, if I'm the Nuggets mm-hmm. and I'm in trade talks, he's untouchable. Mm-hmm. He, you're like mm-hmm. before it was like, oh well, if I'm getting a star, I might put him in there. It's like no, I'm not. Like sh- showing what he did is like okay, he can show me what I expected from him before he got injured when we all thought he was the number one pick. Yeah, even if it's off the bench. If I'm the Nuggets, I wouldn't even trade him now. That's the thing that I think about, where it's like, he's an untouchable for me, at least this season. And I think I tried to say that in mm-hmm. all the Nuggets talk, is that yeah. I would not include him at all. I would yeah. I would not even think about trading him. You could take Bobo all you mm-hmm. want. You could take Bobo all you let's want. Let's hold uh, our horses here. You he's can impressive take, in I'm, person. I'm not mincing my words here. You can trade Bobo. I don't care. MPJ That's your is opinion, and you're <laughs> entitled to be wrong. It's okay. MPJ is untouchable. Um, it's And, and Sam uh, just threw out that... He's been on a good streak, but let's wait until the end of the season. The back surgery is absolutely a thing. His injury history is what is going to hold him back. Again, this is why we can cap the ceiling somewhere. But also, the streak is something that I want to at least say you're wrong about because in the games that he has had 20 or more minutes in, he has been phenomenal. Like he first game he had twenty minutes. Uh, it was back uh, on Halloween. Twenty minutes, five away from the field, one or three from three, four or six from from the field, uh, fifteen points. Then his next game was twenty six minutes, eight or ten for the field, one or three from three, two or two from the line, uh, six boards, nineteen points. Then his next game was against Sacramento, eight of ten from the field. Or sorry, yeah, wait, I'm stupid. Um, Sean reading stats live. Eight, so <laughs> he had his next game. Of 20, yeah, 20 or more minutes was uh, Sacramento, 8 of 10 from the field, 1 of 3 from 3, 2 of 2 from line, 6 boards, 19 points. And then recently, 11 of 12, 2 of 3 from 3, 5 boards, and 25 points. He has been great if you give him 20 minutes a game. Mm -hmm. I I mean, it's not a streak. It's just showing that if you give him time, you give him the ball, he's going to produce. And that's the type of player that he is. The injury concern is the most valid thing that you could say that he won't be a superstar because that means he won't be on the floor. That is the only way I see him not being a superstar. I think in this league, he can absolutely average 20 a night for the Denver Nuggets. I would not be shocked if he is at some point over or above 23 point per game score in his career. The biggest thing for him is just load management and making sure that his body stays right. That is going to be the biggest cap on his superstardom in my mind. He came into the league at the right time. Player health has never been a more uh publicly aware, you know, organizational focus, you know, thing. It, it's just a situation where Teams understand their stars need to be healthy, and it's a load management era. 
And look, they're being smart. Ben Simmons came into the league, small injury, turned into a season off. Played out pretty well for them. Joel Embiid, injury, injury, a couple years off, turned out pretty well. And I think that's going to be the trend is we just have to be more careful with our young talent because they have incredible athleticism. The guys who are coming out now are nothing like you know the athletes and the conditioning and the wear and tear on the body. It's a different story. It's night and day from 20, 30 years ago. So Michael Porter Jr., perfect timing to the league. Yeah. It's now you know socially acceptable to not be out there 82 games a season. It's no longer an expectation of a star to do that. And I think that's why he can be a star is because I don't, I don't know that he'll ever be a 34 minute a night, you know, day in, day out kind of player, but he's someone who has it. He's someone who ball in hands and you're like, I got a pretty good feeling that ball's going to the hoop. Like it's just, that's, that's what he does. It's what he's, it's why he was so good. And it's why it concerned us all so much when in college he, you know, rushed himself back early to try to prove himself and just struggled from the field. And that was, you know, a a definite red flag going into his draft Mm -hmm. process, but you had to have hope like Sean did that it was this is this is fine. He's still not all the way back. Let him get right, and that's what the Denver Nuggets did. You you nailed it on the. Mm-hmm. We've got the time. We've got the patience. This pick is money. We can absolutely let him grow. Let him learn. Let him adjust. And this is like the ideal way to bring someone along. I think this is a perfect marriage because either Millsap next year takes a team friendly deal or he's going to walk in free agency. It opens up a position for Michael Porter Jr. in that starting lineup. Mm-hmm. And as far as I'm concerned, this changes the fact that I look at the Denver Nuggets with Michael Porter Jr. as no longer just a regular season team. Yeah, And that's that's the biggest change to me because we've known what Jokic can do. And we've seen what fat Jokic can do. And really fat Jokic can do. And it's he's always better. He, he's played fantastic mm-hmm. a couple nights. And that's the thing. He's, is like, himself. he's starting to get there. But same time you wonder you know jamal murray got that big deal he's captain consistency he has been stat wise literally the same player for through his entire career it's, yeah, but it's scary I, I'm, I'm saying from a night to night basis that's the amp part right he's, he's, he's not hot someone you can count on he's and that's good the thing. he's good over 82 but he's iffy on a night and that's what you can basis. count on michael Porter jr to fill that as he can yeah. be that third guy we mm-hmm. were looking at other wings on their team being like they're meh players they're definitely good like gary harris is good it's not great I was just looking for a, a thing to show, like, the, the on and off thing, and it's perfect uh, for Jamal Murray. Uh, uh, November uh, 12th against the Hawks, uh, mm-hmm. 18 points, 7 to 16 from the field. Next night against Brooklyn, 1 of 11, 4 <laughs> points. And then the next night against Memphis, 14 of 24, 39 points. Yeah. Like, it's just hot or cold, 21 points, 0 points, 12 points. But if you look at his career averages, same point. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Legit so, year over year. I, I, I think the thing is, like, in, in King, he's saying trade him for Beal. I wouldn't. I, I, I wouldn't because you have a guy who is already learning this offense, that is already in this offense, and you don't really need a guard on that. You have two guards in Jamal Murray well, and Nikola Jokic, and I know that he's not a guard, but you have a guy that can yeah. move the ball like a guard in Nikola Jokic. Who's your you ideal a- starting five for this Nugget team? This season? Like, with the oh, when you said this Michael season, Porter. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. is in there. I'm saying, like, when you were saying like Michael Porter could put up this many points per game and he's one of the top three options, what's your starting lineup look like? Because I'm Again, trying to I'm, figure I'm trying out to figure what out you're doing at that guard season, position. I'm trying to. Are you asking this future? Because this season, season Paul Millsap's still future. better than him. Future. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put him in the starting lineup this year because mm-hmm. a I want you to just keep him. A kind of under wraps. I don't want mm-hmm. you to. Ex- oh, he's got to be on the too minutes much. limit too. Yeah, I don't want you to expose too much. But even then, too, I, I just I, I think that. You know, Millsap does bring something to that lineup that is important. Uh, he, he's able to stretch the floor. He's able to bring great defense, uh, which is something that they lack. Um, I would say that Jokic clearly at the five, Murray at the one. Um, it's difficult just because of contract situations. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, I would say, if I if I had the ability to sign anybody, um, I'm fine with. Gary Harris being there, I think it would be Murray Harris, Porter Jr., Jeremy Grant, Jokic. And the, because the, Millsap's 34, I, I think that he's probably done. I, Jeremy Grant at 25, I love his defense. I love his ability to shoot uh, from the outside. I think he's super athletic. I, I like yeah. that. I think he could cover what 
uh, Porter Jr. and Jokic lack in in defense and their his ability to close out. And so you can I just have him the... guard whoever you want between the mm-hmm. three and the four because he's so capable the of five. defender. He, he's Even played the five, the five before, so yeah. I I think that the the the, the best long term starting lineup for them because uh, this year I wouldn't move Millsap out, Agreed. but. Next year, I don't think they're going to bring him back just because he's going to be expensive. I think, or he's got a, a crazy, he's got a team uh, option for like thirty-four million dollars. So they're not picking that up. Uh, I think their their best one would be Murray, Harris, uh, Porter Jr., uh, Jeremy Grant, and Jokic. Can I counter that with a Murray, Jokic, Porter Jr., Plumley, Bulbul lineup? <laughs> no, you must be this tall. Absolutely not. And. The reason I bring that up is I know this is kind of going back into last year a little bit, but one guy that some people thought could be traded yep. is Gary Harris out of the um, main guys for the Nuggets. And yep. the thing that I think this plays into, Michael Porter, because now that he's playing well, like I said, you're not going to trade him. How does this work in your mind if the Nuggets want to add – a veteran presence like Andre Iguodala, like Danilo Gallinari from either the Thunder or the Grizzlies. Because, like, if they're going to move on, if they can Gallinari move on from... has a need on this team. Okay. Because, like, that's... I like look, Iguodala because he brings defense. Looking around, shooting. there's a lot of people that are saying that Gallinari could be a target for them. Yeah. And with me, it's like, would they, because Porter's playing well, if you're the Nuggets, would you look to shop Gary Harris to try to get one of these other you, guys to come in. You have guys that I think fill the mold of hot scorers already. I don't think you need another uh, guy like that. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, Will Barton's been pretty better defensively this year, uh, but overall in his career he's been a fairly lackluster defender. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think you have two guys that are microwave hot, and Michael Porter Jr. Yeah. and Will Barton. I don't think Gallinari's in need. Iguodala brings a veteran presence, and he brings great defense, and he brings three-point shooting. And he's also you know rested up. He hasn't played. So I, I think that Iguodala is a much more interesting piece. The thing, too, that I, I like, too, and, and Gary Harris might not be a part of this team, but when Harris's contract ends, he'll be making mm-hmm. $20 million in 2021-2022. That's when Porter's contract ends. So I think at least when you're looking all the way out to when Jamal Murray's contract's up in 2024-2025, you're going to have Porter Jr. on an extended deal if he stays healthy. Obviously, that's a big if, but we can't you know, project that. No. And then signing Jokic, but which I think they're probably going to do. So I think once you hit that 2024-2025 mark, the guys that I could say are for sure on this team are going to be Jokic, are going to be Murray, are going to be Porter. Would you do – I've got an Andre Iguodala trade here then. Nuggets only get Iggy. They give up Gary Harris and then two seconds, a 2023 Ooh. and 2022. Why not move on from, oh fuck, what's his name? Malik Beasley. Uh, Malik Beasley. Because I have him mm-hmm. in the Gallinari trade. Oh. The only, reason, go, no, the only no. reason why is with the Grizzlies, Andre Goodell and Gary Harris are around the same contract numbers. Yeah. But the Nuggets Malik don't... Beasley would add $3 million to that, so then the Grizzlies would have to give up something else. Mm. And I don't know. If the Grizzlies are going to want to add to a deal, and if the Nuggets are like, great, now what player would we want I, from the, the Grizzlies? The, the, the tough thing with Iguodala is a 17 mil. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. I don't think they would give up. Because it's not care. a lot. It's I, like right in the ballpark of what a middle salary would be. But but it is a lot because for them, that means they have to get a, well, get rid of their starting guard and Gary Harris. They have to match it. They don't have the ability to match it unless they're giving up Millsap or unless they're giving up Mason Plumley. Mm-hmm. So maybe you give up Plumley for Iguodala in the seconds because really they, mm. the Grizzlies the Grizzlies know they're not what I, I would I, I wouldn't, wouldn't give, give up, up Plumley. That's that's fair. That's weird. Plumley's yeah. a very good a backup center. Yeah. I'm I'm just saying I don't know. I, I th- it's typical because I wouldn't give up Gary Harris. I don't want to lose mm-hmm. a starting guard for Andre Iguodala who's 35 years old and won't be on my team next year. Yeah. And especially two seconds. I, I don't think that's it. it I, I like the idea of Andre Godal on the Nuggets. Mm-hmm. It's just tough because he makes so much money. If, if he was making nine million dollars, he'd be fine. If, if you find a Malik Beasley deal, then do that. That that would but be Beasley's only making two mil. I know that's the problem. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's the situation of like he's the guy who is the odd man out mm-hmm. in this situation. He's I think a good bench talent. I think he could yeah. get a, a good run as a starter on another team where there's an opportunity. But the Nuggets are clearly happy in the situation. They're not going to go ahead and offer him a ton of money. John brings up, too, like they have a lot of expendable players. You have Malik Beasley, who's pretty expendable. You have Torrey Craig, who's pretty expendable. Because the, you have even Monson Morris on this team. It's Love fantastic. It's fantastic at moving the ball and not turning the ball over. So yeah, they're I, so deep. I, I really think that I, I, I just the Nuggets are in a tough spot, at least you know for 
for this year on adding to their team, but I really don't know if they need to if Michael Porter Jr. is going to be Just able to play, play like out. this. Yeah, I, I think absolutely play out because you're going to have $30 million freed up next year when Millsap's deal expires. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you can go and add to your team there, and if you want to bring back Malik Beasley, you can. If you want mm-hmm. to go out and uh, you know bring back uh, Monta Morris has got a team option, I think. So if you want to bring back Tory Craig, uh, Juancho, Mason Plumley, you can go out and do that. You're yeah. going to have money to do so. So I, I think that really I, there's no rush. And Mont- Michael Porter Jr., you just got him for basically free. You you got him for you know that that deal, the, the 14th pick, because you lost one game. If you won that game or in the playoffs, you wouldn't have gotten Michael Porter Jr. And that is such a franchising thing because you then made the playoffs next year. Everybody realized how great he was, uh, your team was. They realized how <laughs> great Nikola Jokic was. You were able to lock down uh, Jamal Murray. Then you add Michael Porter Jr. I really think that the Denver, Denver Nuggets are in a sweet spot. Let's get back and to Michael Porter And then next year Jr. they add Bull Bull. <laughs> I'm, I'm not too high Talk on about Bull striking Bull. That's why you can trade year. Plumley because Bull Bull's going to be no, your backup center. No, Jesus Christ. Stroking it. Stop <laughs> it. Basically a two guard out there. <sighs> the guy is... Like, what the fuck? I mean, seeing him live in the airport, I mean, he looked like to, a two guard We got to man. see him live in person. We got to watch him play in summer league. Like, there's just nothing not to love. He's averaging five boards a game. Like, he's got a negative t- defensive box score plus minus in the G League. I'm not he played that like excited. a couple of games. It was on the Windy Shitty Bulls. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. You, you, you add him to the the nine oh fivers, then he's gonna be he's gonna be a star. I mean, they, they do have a good tendency to play guy. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Uh, also, Jake is apparently done with the Sixers. Uh, and also, he said Bobo is greater than Jokic, and I'm I am assuming, officially done with I'm Jake. I'm assuming the Sixers <laughs> have lost to the Rockets. Yeah, I think losing. so, because they lost to Isaiah Hartenstein, who's a better center than uh, Joel Embiid. Uh, let's go back to Michael Porter Jr. and talk about his stardom. Uh, we'll, yeah. we'll cap his uh, – where, where, where we truly think his uh-huh. true Sam asked is. a good question earlier. Was, yep, that's where oh. I was going. Thanks, Dave, for taking yeah. my thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing your job. What's the highest mm-hmm. pro comparison? And immediately when we started off this, uh, this segment, uh, John – uh, our boy John said KD Light. Uh, yeah. So where would you put his pro ceiling at? Where would he best, if you had to say, you know, if he hit everything, if he stayed healthy, if he's able to play 30 minutes a game, this is where he'd be. Who would be the pro that you could put him at? I have mine if you want me to just go. go ahead. I, I am terrible at pro Modern pro era? Yeah, modern era. I, I, and I, it's, I can't do it because it's our, our thing. It's Rudy Gay. Rudy fucking I think, Gay. I think he, he, he might be a little bit better than, than Rudy Gay. I think he's a little bit more athletic than Rudy Gay, but I think he's in that area. Uh, also a better three-point shooter than Rudy mm-hmm. Gay. So I think he's more of a modern yeah. uh, Rudy Gay. But I think that, yeah, you can get a guy that is a wing that isn't going to be that great defensively, that might not add too much to you in the rebounding category, in the defensive category, in the assist category, but he is going to score buckets for you night in night out he's going to be able to average you know 21 23 24 a night this uh, this nba is much kinder to players like rudy gay and michael porter jr as well Mm -hmm. um and also that helps that michael porter jr is going to be able to help spread that floor out more than rudy gay is um or has been able to do over his career and that he's also in a system that is all about spacing and getting Mm -hmm. shots open and getting guys open looks and the thing that i think is phenomenal from michael porter jr so far is you look at his shot distances if you look mm-hmm. at where he's shooting on the uh, on the floor uh at the rim he's 30 of 40 uh 75 percent three to ten feet he's at shooting 53 percent uh from 10 to 16 feet he's only taking six shots which i absolutely love do not take those mid sh- mid-range shots boy mm-hmm. uh he's at 33 percent then from 16 to the three-point line he's uh taking 14 shots he's at 42.9 percent really great percentages there and then a three-point line 16 to 41 39 percent and it's great to see that that literally he is perfect analytical baby uh of being 40 shots at the rim 41 shots at three point yep absolutely balanced from a little bit longer of a at the rim, but not mid range, he's at 15 shots. From true mid range, he's at 14 shots, and then he's got six in the middle. Yeah, he's absolutely perfectly balanced on where he attacks night in, night out, and he's shooting efficiently from every single level. I think that he can be such a efficient and dynamic scorer in this mm-hmm. league that I think that he he might be Rudy Gay if Rudy Gay was a little bit more athletic which, and also in a and also yeah. a better th- shoot, uh, three point shooter. Which is why retro dropping the knowledge in chat, Tracy McGrady, T Mac, T Mac. Oof. I mean, I, I talk don't... about player comps of offensive upside. Yeah. T Mac was a different kind of monster athletically than MPJ is, you... but. Are, are as we, far as pure scores go, prime T Mac, T Mac. 
Are, I, 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 see, I, because the, retro you have to answer this for us. I don't know which, thing, which era of T Mac we're talking. That's about. the thing is like I, I can't. See, I've watched more Rudy Gay tape than I have. Mm. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, Orlando Tracy McGrady tape where he was dropping 32 and 28 and leading the league. I was only five. Yeah. So I, yeah. I can't be like, oh, yeah, he's great, Tracy McGrady in 2002. Uh, I, I remember more Houston Rockets, you know, going up against the Spurs, you know, T Mac. Uh, and even then, I, I remember more of a hurt T Mac. But it's still not a Push. bad comp because T <laughs> yes. Mac was still a little bit, uh, you know, he was kind of uh, inefficient when I, when I was seeing him. Uh, at least you know prime Houston days, he was shooting year around like thirty three percent from three. Anytime uh, but you he look had back, higher you got value. league average versus uh, theirs. So. Yeah, but you look at his, when he was in his true prime, six attempts per game, thirty eight percent from three. That's when he yep. sh- uh, scored thirty two in, in a season uh, at forty five point seven percent from the field. I really like that. The assist numbers might be a little bit too high, though. Team yeah. was averaging 5.5. I but think Team Mac's a ball. better player, and yeah. he was a different style a player. One-man machine. Yeah. Where Michael Porter Jr. is going to be fitting into an offense and pretty much but, like the second or third option, depending on, um, on Murray. Because Jokic but scoring-wise, I could see it. I mean, the way they handle the ball a little bit, I, I kind of like that. I kind of like that a lot, Retro. This segment is a prime example of, hey, Ricky, shoot your shot, and don't be afraid to be wrong, because... The name I was thinking about after um, John, you were mentioning, and said Katie Light. I'm like, would PG be a good comparison? And mm-hmm. I know this is looking back when he was drafted, but um, hoopshabit.com had him as a um, comp to Paul George. Defensively, they said kind of a stretch, but Absolutely. like the offensive tools, he's got the, like it says here, offensively, the comparison is brilliant. Defensively, it may be a stretch because. I don't think defense often. I think offense because that's where our league is at. That's the one I wanted to say, but I didn't want to throw it out there and be like, Ooh, it, it's, that's it's a little off. bit better just offensively, but because uh, Paul George came in right away and was a great shooter. Mm-hmm. So I, I just wonder, though, because I, I think. Because like, I'm trying to think of the Micah Porter Jr. we saw when he was fully healthy in college, which to me was like a. He's not a dead, like, dead eye shooter, but it's like. He's the guy that can score. He can get his shots. He He's going to put a points fully on the healthy board. College. That's you got to go back and, to high school. And that, like I'm saying, bef- that last year before he got hurt, oh, we saw that. So in high school. No, I'm saying in college we I, saw him a little bit. I think it's just and then little, he got hurt. And, and then it's, we saw it's, him it's more different though with Paul George because Paul George, especially now, he is so so heavy on three point shots than he is driving to the rim. He doesn't play that game more often. And I think that probably has to do with his leg break. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he, he's not as – I think Michael Porter Jr. is going to use his size and his length mm-hmm. more to attack the bucket. He's he's pretty unique in that way, yeah. 6'11", that has that grade of handles. Um, I, that's why the KD thing is so interesting, but mm-hmm. it, it's, it's you never want to compare anybody to uh, to to, um, to KD. So I, I would say that a little bit more of an athletic Rudy Gay would be where it would be at. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't hate the Paul George thing, but then I don't want to compare him because Paul George is such a good defender. So uh, that's where I'm sitting at. Uh, we got uh, Jay Dub saying young Rudy was athletic. Uh, a floor for him is Tobias Harris. Um, I think he's a little bit more uh, athletic than, than Toby. Uh, PG's handles are, t- are too great, which is a fair point. But I think Michael Porter Jr. can handle the ball. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. He's pretty good at dribbling. I just don't know if he's a good enough passer. Yeah, uh, I agree. So at least Question mark if he's even... You know, being told to pass the ball though yeah. with the way he's shooting. J Dub <laughs> is saying PG is a big two guard. I, I, I think that he Michael Porter Jr. could be a big two guard. <laughs> I just don't think he'd defend. That's the biggest thing that I have. Like, and retro also dropped like a six eleven two guard. Retro dropped a Twitter link. A from, Damon uh, Amendolaria. Yep. Uh, DA and CBS. That one, I'll just read it here because yeah. uh, I know YouTubers and everyone after the fact doesn't have the link. Um, it says right now I would say a mix of Giannis and KD. Um, Porter that's said, what Michael Porter Jr. told Yeah, to Porter make said Amendola. on the DA show, I like going to the hole a little more than KD does. I like bumping into people, and I'm a little more physical than KD, but I like to shoot the ball a little more than Giannis. So that's what I like to compare myself to. And also, Tracy McGrady. I get compared to him a lot, and I like that one a lot too. Those are three amazing players. Uh, it doesn't feel bad. 
to be in the same conversation. Yeah, he, as he, yeah. he said that back in, in 2018 mm-hmm. or around draft time. Yeah. Uh, I, I just June 18th I, was the tweet. I don't want to take it back, too, because I, I said he was going to be a superstar. It's so tough to, to say that, like... Uh, well, he's got number one pick potential. It's easy. It's easy to see it, especially if he plays like he did this past week. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just saying, like, it's so tough because those guys are so hallowed that those mm-hmm. guys are Hall of Famers. Yes. Uh, at least being uh, no, KD, they're, they're Giannis, famous, KD yeah. Giannis and, and Tracy McGrady. It's tough to put him in that light because we haven't seen enough of him, and yeah. his back injuries are so severe. But I, I he could Greg Oden. Yeah. Like that's can we, can we kind of mention the downside because J Dub brought up you know Greg yeah. Oden would be a great player in the now yeah. because he wouldn't have been forced to play on injuries. He you know maybe he could have rested himself enough. I know he had a lot of um, leg issues because they were mismatched sizes, his knees, mm-hmm. his ankles, everything down was the core wasn't there, and it's the question of could he have been better had you know he. Been on better medical staff, been on better timeline, yep. and all that shenanigans. But like, if he has another back tweak, if, if something goes wrong, like, it that's it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's a sad story. Yeah, it, 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 it's a situation into. where it's just one bad fall going up to the rim, and that's when he says, "I like going to the rim. I like contact." I'm like, and it was 2018 though. So now, yeah. two years later, I would wonder where his head is at. Uh, but again, he's still not he's not he's not away from doing that because he's shooting as many threes as he is shots at the rim. Right. But the best thing about it is that he is in a system that is all about getting so much space that those at the rim shots are open. Yeah, that you're not going to be driving at offense. people. So yeah. that's the thing that I think is going to help him is that he's in a perfect, literally a perfect landing spot. Uh, final thing is uh, J Dub said uh, Rudy was never a high volume three point shooter, which I mentioned uh, when I when I first brought it up was that Michael Porter Jr. is going to take more threes because he's in a better NBA uh, than Rudy Gay was when Rudy first came in, uh, at least four three point shots. And I also think that he is still a better shooter uh, than Rudy Gay, even if anything is uh, anything's done. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, thoughts? Final thoughts? I think that, Good. that pretty much covers them top to bottom. All right. Before we move into the next segment, let's read some comments. Uh, Jake is apparently going off. But it, it's tough because Jake and Retro have the same color. So I can't <laughs> yeah. tell if it was who. But uh, Jake said, imagine if the Clippers took him over instead of Robinson. Well, if you heard earlier, Jake, you would have uh, realized that we said that already. Yikes. And then Rachel, R- Retro said, dude, I'll fight you. Uh, <laughs> and Jake said, LMAO. Retro said, should the Sixers kept Fultz over Simmons? Uh, See, Jake, because Jake of the just, same color, I thought yeah. that was Jake saying that. I'm like, man, Jake, I know oh. the Sixers lost, but come on, let's move on, man. And then Jake comes back and says, uh, and self-deprecates him and his team and says, just appreciate your team didn't give El Horford $109 million. <laughs> Which, I, if I recall correctly, Jimmy Jake G. was very Crazy high G. Well, I mean, Jimmy they basically G. paid him that much money so John B. didn't have to get embarrassed in the playoffs by him. <laughs> You're welcome, Jake. Yeah, we love you, Jake. Uh, Jake's gonna be on next week. We might do I, the thing that he threw out is gonna be fun. Okay. If we, if we truly do it, I think I texted you guys the idea. Yeah. yeah. I think that could be a, a very very good idea. Mm-hmm. And Jake said we are all wrong eventually. Yes, if your name's not Sean Anderson, I've never been wrong. I mean, Zach Levine, top ten player in the NBA, yeah. right? Oh, that <laughs> you're very wrong about that. Uh, mm. And Dave, how's Memphis doing in the playoffs? Oh, uh, fan fucking fantastic. Yep. Uh, all right. Uh, you mean Jemphis. Blazers win the title. Season isn't over, Jake. <laughs> Season isn't over. <laughs> They're going to get Blake also, Griffin too, right? Also, Blake got injured, so my it's a wash. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's uh, never wrong. <laughs> never wrong. <laughs> never wrong. All right. 